One of the things that I love about sport, or really about any passion, is how much it just transports us away for just two hours, you know, from what we're facing every day in our lives, so we can put a smile on our faces and be passionate about yeah, something. Unless you're running it. Yeah. Then, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, hi, everybody. Hi everybody, welcome to Sidekicks Conversations. I'm Mike Sievert and today I'm at the Sidekicks Pub here at T-Mobile's headquarters with another Seattle-based CEO, the head of the Seattle Kraken, Todd Lewecki. <laughs> Todd is uh, not only the part owner, president, CEO of our local hockey team, he has decades of commitment to the business industry, of sports. He was CEO of the Seattle Seahawks. He was head of the Tampa Bay Lightning. He spent three years as the NFL's Chief Operating Officer. Before I let you jump in, Todd, I also want to say uh, you're an incredible member of our community and philanthropist. He was the recipient of the 2024 Seattle King County First Citizen Award, being recognized for impact in the community. So thanks for all you do, and welcome to T-Mobile. Thank you. Yeah. All right, so obviously it's about sports today. And I want to go, I just want to go right back to the beginning. You've been involved in almost every major sport. How did you get started in the business of sports or what inspired you as a kid, as a fan? Or to give me the origin story here. I had a little bit of an unorthodox uh, upbringing. Uh, I lost a mother, my father remarried. I lost my second mother. My mom and my stepmother died of cancer. So I faced adversity like many people do. But I would say my adversity was a little bit unique. And my escape that whole time was watching football. Um, it, during that period of time, St. Louis got an expansion NHL team that meant so much to me. That's where today, when I look at fans and why they come and why they drive to games and put up with traffic sometimes to get where they're, they're coming to escape from things that uh, might be chasing them in their everyday life. And that was my life. And I never really forgot that. And it gave such mission and purpose to what we do. And then when I had a chance to get involved in professional sports, my first big job was with the Golden State Warriors when I was 27 years old. I brought passion every day because it was more than winning and losing. It was the ability to impact people's lives and I ultimately think impact communities. That's amazing. And I don't know that many people who've been so deep in so many different sports, you know, basketball. Um, so we're gonna, can we talk about expanding here in Seattle? We'll come back to that. Basketball, uh, soccer, football at the highest levels, hockey. How do you do that? How do you think about spanning across? And do you have a favorite? Well, first, I couldn't hold on to a job. So that's part <laughs> of that journey. But, You'll hold down a job. You know, and my friend Bobby Wagner's here. And so. Yeah. Uh, Welcome, Bobby. And. You know, I have always admired the athletes who play the games. And I think if the fans truly understood the journey of a professional athlete, they'd admire them even more. I would say there's a common denominator. There's the athletes, there's the fans. Uh, yeah, they pay for tickets, but more important, they give you their passion, they give you their time. And if you're a steward of those things, if you're a steward of those passions, they will hang in there with you. Bringing the Kraken to Seattle was a great thing. And, I, you know, were you at all surprised by the way the community seemed to rally around this? It seemed like there was so much pent up enthusiasm to have a hockey team here and then to not only come out and compete and then in the second season go all the way to the playoffs and perform and win a series in the playoffs. Like, what was that like? But especially the community rallying around this team. There is a lot that goes into building a franchise long term. Day one, we had no draft picks. We had participated in one draft, but we had no prospects. Yep. And if you want to do this right, as my friend Bobby knows, you know, the draft. And in, in the NHL, a little bit like uh, Major League Baseball, you've got to develop players. It takes time. Amazing. You don't want to rush it. Yep. But the future is super bright, uh, and large part because the fans embrace us. You know, the name, probably one of the hardest things, uh, because I'd sit around and listen to people debate it who had no idea what they were talking about, but everybody's an expert, right? And so, <laughs> then ultimately you have to make a decision. Well, right? and what you do is you ask your fans, you ask your best customers, you listen to people. 
And as I would ask, and there were all sorts of good names. You know, when I first heard Kraken, I'm like, what the heck is it? If you listen to your customers and you do what they want you to do, it's hard to miss. And so when that name came out, it was terrific. And it was originally just an S with a rib. Uh, my boss, a wonderful man named David Bonderman, stood up at a meeting and said, why don't we try an I right there? Uh, I thought it was kind of a crazy idea at that moment, but he proved to be right, and it gave it a little bit of boldness. And Once you say release the Kraken and you hear that <laughs> phrase, it's twice as cool, you know? Yeah. yeah. Okay, while we're on hockey, you guys brought um, the NHL Winter Classic to T-Mobile Park this year to Seattle. What was that like just three years into the you know, NHL journey for Seattle to bring the Winter Classic here. And also, what was it like moving into T-Mobile Park for a weekend? Well, first, we have a great relationship with the Mariners, and uh, I think that's a wonderful thing. People think the teams compete, but ultimately, great teams don't compete. They get along. We uh, talked to the Mariners about doing this, uh, and the idea is that you would play a hockey game in the middle of this beautiful T-Mobile Park, and would people really come? Not only did they come, they stayed the entire game. Every seat was filled. Everyone loved it, but a guy named Mike Katz, uh, yeah. who works there. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I want to learn about the One Roof Foundation. Will you tell me what that's all about? Because everybody's talking about it, and it sounds like it's important that people should know what it is. Uh, giving back builds self-esteem. Uh, giving back matters to your customers. And so day one, we said, under this roof, amazing things are going to happen. And it is one roof where we all prosper. So we staked out issues like youth homelessness. We uh, staked out sustainability, environmental justice. And so powerful things have happened. But when you step up, people are going to ask. And they're going to say, can you help? And it's a great privilege to do that. But one of the projects we've taken on, which I'm so proud of, is Memorial Stadium. Right there on the campus. It occupies a huge footprint on the yep. campus. It's I've owned seen by the designs. The, they're beautiful. It's owned yeah. by the Seattle Public Schools. Uh, they've not had the resource to fix it. They then passed the bond issue, and then the city said, "Oh my gosh, let's make sure we're not just building a high school stadium here. Let's make sure it's something compatible with the grandeur of this campus." And we know that if we pull it off, that those students are going to have those epic experiences again. And we're talking about engaging students, not just the athletes but in production of games and creating a technology center. And uh, I'll be calling you about yeah, that. Yeah, okay. okay? <laughs> I figured. I wonder if we can talk about technology in sports for a second, because what T-Mobile's doing is, you know, when we get involved with a, with a sports um, sponsorship, it's usually actually to try to showcase what we can do as a technology company. For example, we were uh, the connectivity for the Formula One Las Vegas Grand Prix, and that we had a big sponsorship there, but it was much more about showcasing what our unique 5G network can do. How is technology changing sports generally? I mean, you've been around a long time. Yeah. I hope that's not offensive to say, that's a compliment. No, it's, it's good. And technology's changing yeah. sports generally. Yeah, analytics is a huge part of how yeah. we do it, but also bringing the fans into it. Um, and we're working on some really cool stuff on our broadcast where we want the fans to know more. And the way you do it is through technology. And the more the fans know, the more they're going to feel good about the time they're spending, the emotion they're investing. The technology has been a dramatic enhancement for fandom. It's opened all sorts of portals to fandom, and it's only going to increase. One of the things that I love about sport, or really about any passion, and you mentioned this at the beginning of the conversation, is how much it sort of transports us from our everyday life. I mean, this world's filled with all kinds of things that can cause stress and anxiety, and what you do kind of brings us together, but it also just transports us away for just two hours, you know, from what we're facing every day in our lives, so we can put a smile on our faces and be passionate about yeah, something. Unless you're running it. Yeah. And then, uh, <laughs> well, so <laughs> thank you. It can be a little stressful, fans. right? It's like, uh, <laughs> yeah. You're bringing us all together and that's such a huge thing. And you mentioned that while you're giving us all this joy, it's stressful for you. So I, one of the last questions I want to ask you is what do you do for fun? You've, already, you've turned the fun thing we all do, sports, into a job that stresses <laughs> you out. So like where, you know, you've been a Seattle person for a long time. When you're looking for a... Are you doing a little therapy chill. right now with yeah. me? Uh, yeah. Because it's working. <laughs> First, I do love what happens in our building. And, uh, but once the puck drops, it gets a little more serious for me than others. Um, you know, and uh, our GM, I would sometimes go up and sit next to his box. 
um, and we'd get scored on. And then this year, when I showed up, the glass between the two boxes was frosted. And I'm like, okay, I can take a hint here, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I'm transferring my anxiety yeah. to him. But life every day should have wonderment. And, you know, as you get a little bit older, you stop taking small things for granted. So, for instance, this city, I love this city today more than I ever have because I look around. I think our city's best days are actually in front of it. And when you believe in those kinds of things, as corny as it sounds, that's what makes the journey of life wonderful. And uh, I'm privileged to be here with you. I'm privileged to be in my job. I'm privileged to be living in this time. We're privileged to be giving back. Um, a lot of this is an incredible privilege. And as a kid who grew up poor with some adversity, I never take a day for granted, Dev. Well, thanks for the magic you bring to this city and for lifting us up and giving us, you know, an escape and something to be passionate about, but also in doing all that for being an incredible citizen in our community, Todd. Thanks for being at T-Mobile today, man. Cheers. And that's Sidekicks Conversations for today, you guys. We'll see you next time. Take the rest of the day off. Yeah. Here. <laughs> here, here.